YouTube Oz it going. The Godows is back, ranking all 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL from 32 to 1 for this upcoming season. So essentially predictions, not basing it off of last year. Uh, definitely not basing it only off stats. Some people want me to do that. I will rank rookies because they're going to play this year. Some people have a problem with that. I don't really understand it, but let's get on with it. Bo Nix, here's a rookie coming in at 32. I think anyone kind of playing along or making these rankings for this upcoming season, I think they would agree. I don't, I don't think there's going to be too many complaints about Nix being 32. Now, of course, he could surprise, play a little bit better, so I'm not going to guarantee he's going to finish 32, uh, but... You know, he's going to have some rookie struggles. He's not as good as the other rookie prospects for a reason. So feel comfortable with him at 32. 31, I'm going to go Gardner Minshew, who played fairly well last year. Um, you know, not great, you know, but fairly well. And I do like him a lot better in the Shane Steichen offense in that system than the Lou Getze system. So that would be the difference. You know, if it's based off last year, you probably rank him a little higher. He does have some pretty good weapons with the Raiders. Uh, but I thought that system, I'm not necessarily saying one's just a better system in general. I think it fits Minshew's game a little bit better. You know, his scrappy quarterback play, being able to get outside the pocket a lot more. Um, so I thought he was just a more of a fit and maybe why he played fairly well last year. So I'm going to put him at 31. A lot of good quarterbacks, though, so it's hard to be ranked very high. We have a rookie at 30, J.J. McCarthy of the Vikings. Now Sam Darnold could start to start the year. I think it's 50-50. I think if you value McCarthy that much, I mean, you know, and he's a winner like already, you know, he's, you know, could be somewhat pro ready. He's got good weapons. Maybe you start him then. But if Darnold does start, I think McCarthy would get in there for most of the year. I think he can come in there at some point. So I decided to rank JJ McCarthy. If it was Darnold, I'd probably put him at 31. I'd probably bump up Minshew. It's pretty damn close there, but, um, I haven't loved Darnold's game, but again, the Vikings coaching offensively and with their weapons, maybe that helps the quarterback a little bit. McCarthy, you know, a rookie that wasn't asked to th throw the ball a ton at Michigan, even though he was a winner, uh, you know, so he could struggle early on. Again, he does, he is in a pretty good situation, so that definitely helps him a little bit there, but he's going to start at number 30. Number 29, going to go at Russell Wilson, who is definitely declining. Uh, but I do think he could play a little bit better this year than he, than he did last year. He kind of started off pretty well. His stats look decent. The people kind of overrated him last year based on his stats. But I think he could play a little better this year in that Arthur Smith offense. Um, you know, he has some decent weapons. And just not expecting a whole lot. A lot of dink and dunk he's going to have to continue to do. And um, again, there, it makes sense that he's declining and he, and he is declining. So it's not like we can raise him up a bunch here, but I'm going to put him at 29 at 28. Going to go another rookie. Going to go Jaden Daniels of the commanders. I actually think he can start off pretty hot this year. Uh, just kind of like a bold prediction. It's actually not that bold. It happens a little bit, but, um, I, I think it might be a tough game plan because we're so used to the same Washington commanders offense. And now you got this Jaden Daniels. Offense, you know him. He can, you know, obviously he can run. He can roll out a bit, and they have some weapons with Terry McLaurin's a Kingsbury offense. It's a whole new look, so I think it could be explosive, fast throughout the whole year, but mainly at first, and then teams can kind of start the game plan and try to, hey, what can we do to throw off this rookie because he's going to have some weaknesses. He is a rookie, um, you know, and some worry about him throughout the year holding up, taking the shots. We'll see. So uh, I'd actually think the I think the commanders could be a little sneaky in the beginning just because it's a tough game plan. But I got Jaden Daniels at number 28, projecting this upcoming full season. 27, I'm going to go Bryce Young. I definitely think he'll play better this year than he did last year. How much better? I would hope a bit because he struggled a bit last year. But I love Dave Canales. I think that alone helps him. They add some offensive linemen. They add some weapons. Um, you know, so I think it all helps him. I think he'll play a little bit better. He still had some moments last year where people wanted to put on, and there, there is a lot to blame with the play calling and the system, the, the offense alignment, the lack of weapons for sure. But there were moments where Bryce Young, you know, made a negative play and they, they were his fault though. Um, you know, not reading pressure, right. Uh, you know, panicking a little bit under pressure, you know, not doing the correct things. And so those things I, I still think will be there. Like, you still have to play well under pressure. And again, I think he'll play a little bit better. But he'll, he'll still have some of those negatives in there. But I do, again, I do think he will. I, will, I hope he improves this year. I do think he will. He's at 27. 
Uh, 26, going to go with Daniel Jones. A little tricky to rank because he is injured and the Giants were almost looking to replace him, it sounded like, uh, because I, we think more so not because they don't believe in his talent, but more so because they don't really believe in him to stay healthy or how healthy he is right now. So how healthy will he be week one? How healthy will he be this year? How durable will he be? You know, And then which, which Daniel Jones will we get? Because two years ago, he was pretty solid. Was he great? No, but he was solid. Uh, last year, he really struggled and then was beat up and was struggling even more than he was out for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, so it's a little tough with him how he'll what, what he'll be this year. It just the sense from the Giants that I get plays a factor in this is that they aren't super confident. So that it's hard for me to be super confident if you get what I'm saying. But if he's fully healthy and kind of back to anywhere in the range of what he was two years ago, of course, we're going to rank him much, much higher in this. So it's a little bit of to be determined here. And I'm going to put a rookie Drake May at 25. I'm a huge Drake May fan, mainly for his upside. He is a raw prospect. He'll, you know, he'll play hero ball. He'll throw the ball up for grabs. He's got to learn to throw the ball away a little bit more. So those things will pop up, of course, in year one. They pop up for any rookie, but because that's the type of player he is, uh, he could struggle early on. It's definitely possible. I love his upside, though. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good quarterback for the future. I think he could play pretty solid this year. That's why I got him at 25. Again, a lot of good quarterbacks. There's good quarterbacks even ranked down here. He doesn't have the best weapons in New England, but they did make it a little bit better. Hope the offensive line holds up. Uh, but a little bit of a raw, raw prospect. You know, the Giants wanted Drake May, and I think they were going to put him, they're going to start him right away if they took him. So, again, that kind of goes back into the and my confidence in what ranking Daniel Jones because the Giants lack of confidence there, you know, a little bit. So that's a tough part there. But Drake May, again, he's going to have those raw rookie moments for sure. But he's going to have those big flashy moments, uh, like wow, big plays. And Jacoby Brissett could start right away. I'm going to go May starts right away. But even if he doesn't, I think he's in fairly early. Uh, I think he's got a bright future. We will see. Uh, I got Anthony Richardson at 24, and I had the 24, 5, 26, 27. So Anthony Richardson through Bryce Young were all, like, in the same range for me. Like, there's some comparisons. Like, for the most part, besides Daniel Jones, those are raw prospects. Uh, one of them is a rookie, Drake May. But Anthony Richardson on his second year only played four games, and he didn't even play all in those four games last year. He's still, a, in a way, a prospect Bryce Young, I know, played the full season last year, but second year, a little bit better of a go at it with better weapons. Like, these are all essentially prospects still. So I put Richardson at the top, and then Daniel Jones has, has a little bit of the injury concerns, and I guess Anthony Richardson does now as well because he was injured three times in four games last year, missed the rest of the season. So all those guys were kind of in the same tier, so I did put Richardson at the top of that tier. I do love his upside. Now, this isn't really based off upside. It's based off this year, but... Good system under Shane Steichen. I think it really fits Richardson ball. And I think Richardson's, Richardson ball fits Steichen ball, if you get what I'm saying. Um, and it's why I think Minshew played a little bit better because it just kind of you take it takes that player's strengths a little bit more out, uh, out of him. But if I can trust Richardson to stay fully healthy, again, three injuries, one on the throwing shoulder. Uh, but if I, if I can trust him a little bit more, he'd probably be a little – he'd definitely be ranked a little bit better here. Um so let's see if he can kind of go out there and fully stay healthy. He was kind of what we expected him to be in that short stint last year was a raw pros flashy, very raw prospect with very high upside. He had those big flashes, but he had some misses. Um, you know, you want the completion percentage to be higher, but it's such you can't really judge it off that. It's such a limited uh, sample size there. So, uh, but a again, a lot of upside uh, could be like a boomer bust type player this year. I think it's going to depend on if he's healthy or not. But I will rank him. At 24, I actually at one point was thinking May ahead of him because I'm like, May's a raw high upside prospect. Richardson, he still is that. And I think all of us agree that May was just a better, if you look at him as prospect, May was better. So should I be ranking May ahead of him? But, uh, you know, Rich, I like the system he's in a little bit more there. And I guess he was in the room last year, so that kind of helped. So he's at 24. 23 going to go Derek Carr, who is his is declining. Maybe he could get a, a little bit better or a little bit more on the same page with his his uh, teammates, his weapons this year. But he's just not the guy that he used to be, it feels like. Um, he's a little inconsistent, though, because there's, there's times where it's like, okay, all right, there's Derek Carr. And then there's times where it's like, man, what happened to Derek Carr? So uh, a little bit more of that we're going to get. But I, I do think he's going to be more consistent than the guys listed below him. 
you know, so I think we kind of take a next jump up here once we get into Derek Carr, like a little bit more consistency, uh, even though I don't think he's super consistent. It's just I don't think he's going to have those. Well, yeah, with Richardson and May, like raw type guys, like they're going to have their hiccups. It's OK if they do Bryce Young, um, you know, so he's not really in that category. Uh, number 22, we're going to go Will Levis, who actually impressed last year. I do want to see more. It was, it was somewhat of a small sample size, but um, he was better than I expected last year. Uh, kind of gives you flashbacks of uh, not his last year at Kentucky, but the two, the second to last year where it's like you're watching him, you're going, oh, this is a future top guy. This is a future top NFL prospect for a reason. And then he didn't play as well that last year, and it kind of tells you, like, hey, that talent really doesn't disappear, disappear in those young guys because he kind of has that, so... Um, he impressed me, was much better than I thought he'd be. And then you factor in that he got thrown into a bad situation. I got to keep reminding myself that, you know, um, thrown into a bad situation. And he still kind of played well. So now a uh, more offense oriented uh, coaching staff and better weapons, it could help Will Levis a bit. You do wonder about the offensive line. I do think they made it a little bit better. Uh, but it's uh, another guy that, was kind of like a raw high upside prospect, but he kind of showed to be a little pro ready, even though he still had his rookie mistakes last year, but he got thrown into some of those situ in that not the greatest situation. So I'm going to go Levis at 22. He can be that surprise guy though. Like there's always the guys that we not expect to be, you know, ranking in the top 15, top 10. Like he could, could be that one of those guys, uh, 21 going to go to rookie Caleb Williams. I know the, every year I rank position players, players by position and, when I rank rookies, people have a they have a meltdown about it, and it's like some people. Yeah, if I rank rookies at all, and some people, if I don't rank, like they want me just to rank all the rookies at the bottom. So I know those people are going to be a little upset about this. But Caleb Williams is a talented quarterback. First off, rookies are going to play this year. Some of them might play pretty well. He's a very talented quarterback. He has some weapons in Chicago. Uh, yeah, there will be the rookie moments, the hiccups. The, I think he'd be a little inconsistent. Um, but he'll be flashy. He's going to make big time plays with his weapons. So we're going to put him up, up near the top 20 here. I was really close with him and Will Levis, like back and forth with that. Uh, I like that Will Levis has some play under his belt. He's kind of ahead of schedule. And that would be the difference between the other second year guys. Like Bryce Young's a little behind schedule because he was worse than expected last year. Richardson is behind schedule because he was a raw prospect with high upside. Uh, just needed more reps, and he didn't get those reps because now we added the injury thing to that. Um, so Levis a little bit more ahead of schedule. Um, but to me, essentially still a prospect, and Caleb Williams is a much better prospect uh, if you're comparing the two, but he does have last year under his belt. So it's pretty close for those two. Um, one of them was going to be 21, one was going to be 22. There was really no debate about putting them any lower or higher for the most part. But uh, for Williams, like, could he have like a CJ Stroud type season? He he, have, he has the talent. I, Stroud was a little more, he was definitely more accurate, uh, a little more pro ready, um, I thought, in, in my opinion. And yeah, the thing with Stroud is I thought he played better against better competition as a prospect. So coming in, it didn't really phase him much. Where Williams, his one knock is really, yeah, uh, you got to play better when he plays the better comp. So kind of going against NFL comp, is he going to play consistently every single week? Probably not. It's okay, though, because he's a rookie. Um, so I got him at 21. I got Geno at 20. I think people people want to say, like, Geno was awful last year. I think that's a little bit, uh, not a little bit, a big overreaction. Like, he wasn't great. Maybe he wasn't good, but he wasn't awful. Like, he was okay last year. He just wasn't nearly as good as the year before because he's pretty pretty damn good uh, the year before. Uh, you know, but I still think that talent's there. And then look what they did with the offensive staff as well. Uh, it's more, you know, pass focus. Uh, you know, they're going to get a lot more explosive plays. They're going to get a lot more out of the quarterback. So I think Geno could play much better this year than he did last year. Uh, but then it kind of goes to show how many good quarterbacks there are because I think he could play fairly well, and I have him at number 20. Uh, 19, going to go Baker, and Baker played better than this last year. I, do, I don't I do like that Dave Canales is gone. I think he really worked well with that offense with Baker Mayfield. Um, and Baker was solid. He was clutch, and, and I think, you know, even though it's night number 19, I think he's a good quarterback. I just think there's 18. Most likely that could be better, I guess, depending on injury. Um, you know, for this season, but I was happy with how Baker played last year. Uh, 18, going to go to Sean Watson, a very tricky one to rank because it's been like how many years since we've seen him play 
at a high level, but that was a very high level. But uh, then we've seen him out for, you know, that season and then uh, a little underwhelming when he did play uh, in the in the recent, uh, you know, stints, I guess. But the talent's there. He had When he did play when he was healthy in the beginning of last year, he was clutch. I love that. He was very clutch. He was smart at the end of games. Um, so he does need and durability plays a part of these rankings. So he does have to stay healthy. And in which Deshaun Watson are we going to get? He has weapons in Cleveland. He's a very tricky one to rank. Uh, number 17. I actually had those flipped at one point, but I went with Kyler at 17. He's going to trust him to stay healthier. We'll see how consistent he can be. We're going to see him full season with, with the, in this uh, system. It's more of a pro style system than he had with Kingsbury. So is it going to fit him? Um, well or is it not but we I, I thought he played fairly well last year just wish he was a little more consistent but he's gonna be at 17 another very tricky one to rank is Trevor Lawrence who I have at 16 I want to rank Lawrence higher last year was a miss for me because I ranked him well inside the top 10 when I was predicting the 2023 season and he did not finish inside the top 10 at times he kind of looked like it but very little times uh, but I know the talent is in there like I know it is in there and if you said, if you could see the future and you said Trevor Lawrence played like an elite, elite quarterback this upcoming season, I'd say it's really not that surprising to me. And I'm not sitting here saying he's going to be elite or it's a high probability he plays elite. But if you said he played great or elite, it would not surprise me. It would not surprise me. So uh, a little tricky of one to rank. There's so many good quarterbacks, though. And he, you know, he made some rough decisions last year. Um, you know, didn't like him closing out in big moments. So that bumps him down a little bit. Again, it's not. I think he plays better this year. He had a lot of throws that were. He had a lot of drops too. His receiver dropped the ball, uh, but he had a lot of throws that were bare misses, like right there, and those can just turn into completions just like that, just with another season. Uh, and then we would be thinking he's a great quarterback. So a little tricky there. He needs to be way more consistent for me to feel comfortable about ranking him a little higher, but. Uh, again, there's so many good quarterbacks down here. It just shows where the talent's at. 15, I'm going to go Kirk Cousins. Now, if Kirk Cousins wasn't coming off the Achilles injury at 35 years old, I would probably rank him 12 or 13. Uh, he has been a top 10 quarterback when playing, but some of those young guns are coming up. We'll talk about him. Stroud, Love. Um, there's probably more. We'll talk about him. Um, but I still think Kirk Cousins is a very consistent, very good, very accurate quarterback. I don't think the injury will affect him too much, but... It is something at his age. Uh, then people say, you know, no more Kevin O'Connell, no more Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah, I get that, but I think he's going to create weapons in Atlanta. I mean, he has weapons, but I think he's going to help Drake London take that next step. He's already kind of a big-time player in the making, but he's going to make something out of, uh, out of Kyle Pitts, Darnell Mooney, which we didn't really see enough of before, what we wanted to see. I guess they're a little underwhelming, so... Um, I, I think it's a very good quarterback. I think it's going to give the Falcons a major, major boost. Like, you know, again, if he wasn't coming off the Achilles injury, I'd probably rank him a few spots higher because we're splitting hairs with these guys as they're all so, so close uh, in talent. 14, I'm going to go Tua. And, yeah, I mean, first half of the season last year, Tua looked like number one, you know, so we want that full time. I'm not going to base this off of stats. I'm not going to base this off of just the regular season, uh, like big games, playoff games. Everything, like what I think they can do, anything football, anything NFL plays a part. So uh, we need, we do, I want to feel more comfortable about him in those big games, you know, in the playoffs, things like that uh, for me to rank him even further up. But it's a very solid quarterback that could be, could be getting better. And I mean, again, there was a portion of last year where we were ranking him like in the top three as a quarterback. So he has that in him. I got him at 14. Uh, Jared Goff at number 13 had an incredible year last year was better than I expected him to have, uh, last year. So, um, pretty consistent, accurate quarterback. That's playing much better than how he was at the end of his career in the Rams. Um, he had some, a couple rough games last year. So hopefully more of those don't pop up. Um, he perfect world. He could throw some of those sideline ball and throws to the sideline a little bit better to kind of get him into, you know, that great tier, um, but, yeah, very consistent, solid quarterback. I'm going to put him at number 13. 
Number 12, I guess a tricky one to rank too because he's coming off the Achilles injury. But if he wasn't coming off the Achilles injury, I'm pretty sure he'd have played pretty well last year. And I'm pretty sure I'd be ranking him a little bit higher. You know, kind of like a Kirk Cousins situation. I'd be ranking him a little bit higher right now. But, you know, so it's a little bit. We haven't seen him play on the Jets yet. I mean, we saw him play a few snaps, but haven't seen him play on the Jets. Haven't seen him play at this age. Haven't seen him play. Uh, post Achilles injury so it is a little tricky but I am not going to doubt Aaron Rodgers he's going to be pretty solid they got some weapons back there he could be much better than 12 um I got a tough one to rank I think there's some people that would probably put him better than 12 because it's Aaron Rodgers if he's healthy he's going to play great uh, get that but some there's probably a lot of people that rank him below 12 because yeah yeah we haven't seen him play with the Jets we haven't seen him play post Achilles injury he's old um I just think he's going to play pretty well I think he's in the range of the golf to uh Kirk uh Trevor Lawrence uh, guys here uh, number 11 gonna go Dak Prescott and uh, Dak I think is a very good quarterback it just shows how many good very good how many great quarterbacks there are in the NFL before I made these rankings if you would have asked me where you know if you would have told me you're gonna rank Dak at 11 I'd say ah it's a little low I'd probably rank him higher but then when I sat down I was almost surprised with my own ranking when I sat down and just looked at you know listed off all the quarterbacks I'm like man there's some guys on the rise some guys I really like this upcoming year some young guys again on the rise and perfect world I would like Dak to play better you know prove to me something you know prove to me a little us a little bit more they could play better in the bigger games in the playoffs he's gonna have incredible stats he's gonna be good it's gonna be really good he's gonna be really good in the regular season I want a little bit more and he's 30 years old some of these other guys are younger um you know, and getting better, and that's right. Hurt, Hurts kind of in the same boat. Like I would, I thought maybe looking at my own rankings, it feels a little low for Hurts. But the guys I had ahead, have ahead of him, I have ahead of him. That's where I want to put him. Uh, Hurts came back down to earth a little bit last year. I do think he'll be better this year than he was last year. I would hope so. Not that he was, but any close to bad last year. He's pretty solid. Uh, still has those flashy plays. Obviously has the legs as well. Um, Dak was better than Hurts last year. Again, not last year rankings. I gave the edge to Hurts. Again, I think Dak could play around the same. He, you know, lost some guys, but then Hurts is younger, still getting better. I think he played a little bit better. So I put him at number 10. Needs to be a little bit more consistent of a passer. Um, so that's where I have him. Uh, number 9, I'm going to go Brock Purdy. Now this one will probably be debated in the comments a lot. I think maybe most people will have be lower on him, but there are some people I've seen their rankings. They're actually higher on him. Not a lot of people, but... Um, Purdy played great last year again not based on last year but to me it tells me like where he's heading um, he's young very young still getting going a lot of upside in a pretty good system with pretty good playmakers they've had you know so far they, they didn't trade any of their playmakers and they've added more um, you know trying to make that offensive line better again he was in the MVP conversation for a reason last year now maybe he won't be in that MVP conversation this year it's a whole new year but I think it's a guy that's getting better and when I look at Niners games last year like big games I thought Purdy was the reason they won a lot of them I thought he was clutch I thought he was visibly getting better like sometimes not by the not by the year not by the week but like within games like I could see him getting better which is pretty crazy uh and then when when the Niners struggled it was actually most time sometimes was on Purdy there was some games in the middle of the year where you know a little hit or miss uh but like in the big games like late when they had like even games they won when they were like struggling a little bit I thought it was everyone but Purdy's fault like I'm not everyone but like, it's like, what's the issue with the offense line? What's the issue? The defense is not the same as what it used to be. And Purdy kind of got them out of it a little bit. Sometimes McCaffrey, too. But So I love where Purdy's heading. I'm going to put him at 9. I'm going to put him at 9. You would like for him to be perfect world, be a little bit more consistent, I suppose. Um, number 8, going to go Matthew Stafford. I think another tricky one to rank because I love Matthew Stafford last year. Last year, I thought he was incredible. I was probably his biggest supporter based on his game last year. I actually thought... Like, he should have been... Do I think he should have won MVP? No, I'm not saying that. But I thought he should have been kind of close to that conversation. I was that high on Stafford's game last year. I thought he was that good. I thought he was that clutch. He was easily the most important player for the Rams last year. Um, you know, he was very, very good. So if he repeats that, which he could, I guess, because he just did it last year. If he repeats that, I'm going to put him much better than eight. Um, so me putting him at eight is not really doubting he can do that again. But at his age, with the injuries he's suffered, it might be a little tough, and it might be a little tough for him to stay healthy um, because 
he, he keeps getting a little beat up every single year, except for the Super Bowl year. It looked pretty good there, and he won the Super Bowl. Um, so the talent is most – he's not declining it, and he could this year, I suppose, but that would be news. That would be new news for us, new uh, a new sight, uh, you know, because we haven't seen that yet. He, he played great last year, so – uh, it's tricky because I do factor in, like, is this guy going to stay healthy for all year? Um, and then number seven, I put Jordan Love, and I already posted this, uh, a graphic of the, my rankings for our Twitter subscribers and had somebody brought up a good point. Like, Stafford should be out of Love. Uh, like, if you who is Super Bowl, who would you rather have? It's a really good point. Really good point because you'd rather have Matt Stafford for sure. Uh, if he's healthy in the Super Bowl, though, but I, I did factor. I'm doing. I am factoring more than just the Super Bowl. It's a good debate, though. It makes me think. It's a good topic, but more than the Super Bowl, full season. You also development progression. You saw what Jordan Love was beginning of last year, the middle of last year, to the end of last year in the playoffs. Um, so another big. It's. I think it's realistic for another step up for Jordan Love. What he can be. I expect him to be a healthy full year. So that was my thinking on that. Um, but again, I, it's Stafford's a guy I'm like tempted to rank higher because I loved his game last year. Uh, number six gonna go Justin Herbert, which is the guy that could be number number one really. Like I, I'm not gonna sit here and say like high probability is number one, but he has the arm talent, he has the overall talent, the overall quarterback play to match a Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, you know whatever he does. Uh, he's got to close out games a little better. Got to, you know, win games a little more often, bigger games. Um, big factor here was his weapons compared to the other guys. Not really on par. The offensive line will, will be much better than it was last year, and the coaching should be better. But it's a guy that has elite talent. It's hard. Is, is he elite? That's kind of the question there. So I think if you had better talent around him, I'd, probably, I'd rank him another spot or two uh, higher, actually. Uh, but I'm going to put Herbert at six, a guy that is like right there, like ready to like, he's elite. He's a top three. Like we're ready to say that about him. Um, and maybe the new coaching would help that. Uh, number five, and I go Lamar. It's a tricky again, like a Lamar Herbert comparison, for an example, like Herbert's a much better passer, like much better. And I'm not a guy that's like anti Lamar as a passer. Like I think he's a passer. He can throw the ball, um, you know, but Lamar's a better playmaker, a better winner, uh, he's proven a bit more, um, so I feel a little more comfortable for, with him this season with the talent around him, even though they're kind of lacking right now as well. Uh, but I'll put him at five. He was the MVP last year for a reason. I'm going to factor in more than just you know MVP number, like regular season numbers and play. Uh, you know how they are in the big games, the playoffs. You know what type of quarterback are they? Like all those things kind of factor in for me. So I'm going to put Lamar at five. Him and Herbert were really, really, really close, kind of like Love and Stafford for me. And then I think Purdy, Hurts, Dak were kind of all in the same tier. Number four, I'm going to put a second-year guy in C.J. Stroud. I mean, he played around this range last year, and that was as a rookie. I think with his upside, with his progression, with his coaching, with the talent that is around him, the uh, the more more talent that's around him now, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon, you know, what they've added, um, it only helps him progress even more. So he already flashed – elite moments even though he wasn't elite you know you can't really say he's an elite but uh, he's on pace to get there right now right now so um love his ac- accuracy love his clutch uh, playability love, like his big playability the arm talent um very smart quarterback uh can maneuver around pressures by you know with proper footwork you know but is remains a, po- a pocket passer a a uh, legit pocket passer. So I'm going to put him at four. Could there be a sophomore slump? I don't really see it, but uh, it used to be more of a thing than it is recently. Um, you know, so could this be, and can we look back in this? But yeah, you put a second year guy too high. I guess I could see it, but I feel a little bit better with him up here. Like we can bring up another comparison here, like Herbert, CJ Stroud, both like prototype looking quarterbacks. They both have arm talent. You'd say Herbert's arm talent is better and he's more, a little more polished in the league. Uh, but the difference in weapons actually is huge with with with, uh, with this. Like if Herbert had uh, Stroud's weapons and Stroud had Herbert's weapons, I, I think you know they would be in flip spots there. You know, but that is not at all me me saying like Stroud was only good because I don't even think the like he I actually am under the category of Stroud created the weapons. Like he made other guys better. Um, you know, so I'm not really saying he's only up here because he's because his weapons. It's just. 
kind of going back to Herbert. Like I think Herbert really could be a top three quarterback very, very easily. It's just uh, kind of finished putting together, and I w- wish he had a little bit more talent around him. Uh, on to the top three, I got Joe Burrow at number three. Now he has to stay healthy. He has to stay healthy. But if he is healthy, this is an elite quarterback, and this is probably number two. If I full, if I could see him play out the whole year, and if I could fully trust him, I'd probably put him at number two behind the obvious because um, he's that good. I think I probably the most accurate passer uh, in, in all of football and Stroud's right there. Now that's a big thing about Stroud. He's, he's so accurate. Um, if you're talking about just purely accuracy, that's actually a good debate. Burrow, Stroud, like who's next? Like Kirk cousins might be up there. Um, if Rogers is in Rogers form, like that's an interesting debate actually, but, um, just a big Joe Burrow fan. I, I think he's that good. He's that talented, that elite, like sure thing elite if he's on the field and healthy. It's just it's just the only thing there. And it helps that he has the weapons, but it, it kind of goes into this because we're essentially predicting the upcoming season. So your weapons help you. I'm not one that goes, well, if he didn't have these weapons, like and this guy did, we're gonna, you know, I'm not gonna rank it based off if everyone had the same weapons. We can, you know, but like we talked about, like we can imagine like where guys would actually be, but it's really not how you rank things. Number two, I'm gonna go Josh Allen, one of the biggest playmakers in all of the NFL. Um, I, I think he's clearly number two right now. I don't want to say clearly because I actually, if Burrow's fully healthy, I almost want to put Burrow at two, but because he's not, and we saw Josh Allen play last year like a MVP caliber type player. Um, you know, and, and we know we know what we're going to get from him this year. Like it's very easy to predict. Like he lost digs. I don't really give a shit. Like he's going to play very, very well with his arm first and then with his legs. He's going to win football games. He's going to be clutch. So we're going to put him at number two. Um, yeah, I think people will knock him a little bit because he throws a lot of interceptions. And, yes, perfect world. Let's cut down on those interceptions. You don't want to be a turnover guy. You don't want to be near the top, you know, leading the NFL in, in interceptions. I get that. It, people have to realize it is a different game these days than it was five, ten years ago. Like five, ten years ago, if you're throwing those interceptions, yeah, you're probably not a starting quarterback. I mean, it costs your team the game. It, the play – style the systems the play caused a lot more running back then so if you turn the ball over the clock strange you know it's a different game now um these guys but josh allen really didn't exist you know like 10 years ago like that player so i do think he would have thrived back then uh probably a lot more with his legs uh even though he does now but people got to realize that in today's game like if you turn the ball over a little bit you're fine because it, as long as you make those b- big game changing plays and Josh Allen does that more than anybody. And as long as you win games and he wins games and games that they win a lot of time is because of Josh Allen. So interceptions are bad because you give the other team the ball. You took a chance away from yourself and uh, you know that it might swing, it might swing the game, but he continues to make bigger plays and overcome those turnovers and win, and win football games. You wish there was a little less turnovers and maybe a little bit more wins then? Uh, you know, wins at an elite level like Super Bowl because we know he's capable of it, but that's perfect world. Uh, he's number two right now. And number one is obvious. Everyone's number one. If you don't have Patrick Mahomes number one, I don't know. Well, I guess if you're predicting this upcoming year like I am, I guess if you're predicting somebody else to play a little bit better, Sure, whatever. But Mahomes is number one. It's pretty hard not to rank him number one. Um, best arm talent overall if you combine everything. Uh, most clutch, uh, especially in key situations, the best winner. And winning, people try to t- convince themselves. They think they're convincing other people, but they're trying to convince themselves that wins don't really matter when it comes to quarterbacks or it's not a quarterback stat. It is. Quarterbacks win, good quarterbacks win football games. Elite quarterbacks win football games and play like Patrick Mahomes, you know, and, you know, high level of talent. Good quarterbacks find ways to win football games. Um, it's just how it's been. There, there's no, there's no bad, there's no good quarterbacks consistently losing football games, you know. Um, it's just not how it goes. Uh, and we're not really going to factor in the guys that we've seen like less than half a season for the second year guys. Like, we can't evaluate. Levis and Richardson, for an example, are the rookies in that category yet. But you get my point. Uh, so those are my rankings. I'm sure people will have problems with it. I, you know, I, it's how it goes. Uh, but there was no debate at one. I was firm on Josh Allen too. Like I said, Burrow could be too if he's fully healthy. Um, Shroud, Lamar, and Herbert were all in the same boat. I think Herbert has actually the most overall talent uh, as a 
passing quarterback compared to all three. Um, I think the other ones just have a, a little bit more uh, weapons, actually, and a little bit more uh, consistent in the winning column. Uh, Love and Stafford were very, very close to me, just factoring in durability and, and Love's upside is going to continue to progress. We progressed at a rapid rate last year. To me, Purdy, Hurts, and Dak, they were all kind of really close. I just love the progression of Purdy and where he's heading. Um, and then Rodgers, Goff, Tua, Kirk, and T-Law were all in uh, the conversation for 12 to, to 16, uh, all really, really close. I actually would have Kirk at the top of that if he wasn't off an Achilles injury, but Rodgers, would, if he wasn't off Achilles injury, he would remain at the top of that. And he could be higher, but it's tougher to rank him ahead of the guys ahead of ahead of them. But Trevor Lawrence is a guy that could, I could see myself ranking him five uh, at the end of the year. Uh, I could see that. Um, you know, so he's a tricky one. Murray and Watson uh, and Baker were right behind Trevor Lawrence, pretty much in that conversation. Um, Gino, I think people are kind of hating on a little bit too much, but I uh, was kind of firm with him at 20. He wasn't going to go any higher or any lower. Uh, and then Caleb and, and Will Levis, were the, to me, they weren't going to go any higher besides the one spot or lower. Those were 21 and 22. I, I kept flipping those. Still kind of a little tricky. And then, again, I, and then Carr was pretty firm at 23. I didn't really, you know, can I put Richardson over him? Uh, could I put, you know, I thought you could argue Levis' moments last year. He was already, you know, right there or better. And then what they did with that system. So was he going to be overhead of Levis or Caleb? No. Uh, again, Richardson, May, Daniel Jones, Bryce Young, all in the same boat. Uh, three of the guys, again, Still essentially prospects, high upside, but pretty raw. They're going to have their hiccups right now. And then a couple of them, will they stay healthy? There's, there's, There was those knocks on Young, uh, but then now there's those knocks on Richardson and Daniel Jones. Um, and the rest were kind of in the same. Jane Daniels is kind of in that tier as well. I guess I should put him in that tier. Uh, but that's where I was at with my quarterbacks today. Let me know your guys' thoughts or your rankings in the comments. A uh, ton of football content on the channel. We're going to be covering the schedule release next week, so hopefully you join us for that. Check out our sponsors, Liquid IV, GLD Shop, Walk the Mock, Code GOAT for a percentage off. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.